This kit here promises to make it even easier to put an IPS screen inside an original Game Boy. Let's find out if it does. Hi, welcome back to the shed. This kit here promises to make it really easy to put an IPS backlit screen inside an original Nintendo Game Boy. Now I've got a broken Game Boy here, I've got a shell that's in good shape, so I think this kit should hopefully bring the whole thing together. We're going to see if the kit really does make it easier than last time around, because when I did the IPS screen last time in the brown Game Boy, it turned out really well, but there were a few bits that were a bit awkward during the process, so let's see if this makes it any easier. Okay, so this is the kit. We're going to open that up and have a look in a minute. First of all, let's look at what else I've got. This is my broken Game Boy. I say broken, everything works fine apart from the screen. When I switch on, it's got, if I adjust the contrast, you'll be able to see better. It's got a dead row of pixels here. Now the vertical row I'd be able to fix, but the horizontal ones I can't. So the sound's working, everything else is working fine, but that screen is no good and is very, very difficult to repair. So what I can do is switch that off, remove the front PCB altogether, and the backboard should be all I need to work with this new kit. Now I've already installed a ProSound mod uh, which is simply a case of cutting two wires away from here and replacing it with two new ones that solder up to this point here by the volume dial and these two points down here by the headphone port. Okay, so I've done other videos about that. I'm planning another video soon about Pro Sound Mods, so we can just skip over that. Also, I've got a shell from a previous project that is saved. Uh, it's in really good shape, but the screen is a little scratched, so that's going to be taken out and removed. But the rest of the shell I've already cleaned up. There's going to be a little bit of cutting involved on this shell as well. Okay, so we've got a few bits to cut away on the front panel. We've got the two screw posts at the top and one of these little fins here. Uh, on the back, we've got this little strip here that needs to be taken off. So I did that with a knife last time. I'm going to do that first now. And just skim across this little area here and it's just that little bit that's raised there that needs removing. Obviously, if you're using a knife, cut away from your fingers. Because if it's anywhere near your fingers, it's going into your fingers. That's level. That was nice and easy. So the front, I'm going to remove these two bits and this here. That's all done. One of the other things about this Game Boy is the screen cover. I had a couple of scratches, I tried polishing those out but it didn't really work so this needs removing. Uh, to remove these simply apply a bit of pressure from the back up one corner and it will lift and then you can carefully lift that all the way around. It will leave a little bit of sticky mess behind. So that is one of the things I often see where people are modding Game Boys, that's the point where people get lazy, they'll just remove the old screen, leave all the glue there and try and stick the new screen on and it just, partly it won't stick properly, secondly it'll be raised ever so slightly from, from the screen so that's what I would always recommend doing is, is remove as much as you can from that surface and the edge of the razor blade is really good for doing that. So that's now the shell pretty much ready. Next what we'll do is mount the back half of the Game Boy into the back half of the shell. And what we'll do is just take all these parts out, transplant them there. The only difference being I'll need the slightly darker power in place there. I'll basically just take all this out. So we're going to have all the right screws in the right place. Out. That straight out. And slotting it in. Just a direct transplant to there. I'll put my screws back in. I think I'll need not my wiring from the Pro Sound. So that's going to stay put when it's all going back together now. So that's my back half pretty much done. I'll just replace my batteries. And this obviously is the old grey dust cover there. 
I'll see if I've got a yellow one hanging about somewhere. Uh, right, so that's my back half all done. On to our front half, and we'll take a look at what's in our new kit. Comes in Ziploc bag. All the branding on it, which is quite a nice touch. This seems to be inside what looks like a DS type case. Um, so in there, there's a bag, the screen and the ribbon and there's a 3D printed bracket that comes with it as well which is what's supposed to make it easier to get it in place. Also there's the PCB itself, that's different. It's got a speaker already pre-soldered so you don't need to do any soldering, that's already on and um, looks fairly securely soldered in place there. It's soldered on the back which is interesting rather than fed through and soldered on the front but obviously that should work anyway. Having a look at what we've got in here, there's the ribbon to connect to this part of our Game Boy and the screen hot glued into the 3D printed bracket there. So all I should have to do is plop that in to my front shell, put the board in place with my buttons, put the whole thing together and that's, that's pretty much it. So this will just sit in place like that so that should just fit in no problem and that should mean that the screen is lined up just right and it does look to be really well centered there on the bracket and they fit quite well so what we'll do now i've checked that is remove the film peel back the cover that's on the screen and that will sit in place here i've already removed the parts that would have got in the way up here um, so that fits fairly flat in place there seem to have removed enough for that to sit flat so that's all okay uh, and then we've got our buttons d-pad a and b start select and then the board just goes in place yeah, and the speaker here. The speaker is not the same size as the original. The original one just kind of locks into the bracket there, just the right size. I mean, I'm assuming with a newer part, it might sound better, um, but if it's rattling around in there, I might need to open it back up afterwards and put a little bit of hot glue in place. Now how many screws are actually on this because there's 10 on the original we've got one two three four five six and there's nothing on the upper part there. Now thinking about that little pad that I said wasn't there last time if you've seen my other video where I did the IPS last time on the DMG you'll know that this got a little bit stuck um, against that flat bit or on, on the other bit so I think that part might just lift it slightly and stop this from pushing against the plastic and mean that you can move that dial a little more freely uh, right so we've got a ribbon here there's a little tab to lift up ribbon to flip over and just put in place there it's feeling a bit awkward so maybe tweezers would be better in place and then we've got our larger ribbon so I'll just line up here carefully wiggle that into place slot it in no problem on both those sides so hopefully if I power on it should look all right Ooh, there we go and don't worry about the black bit it's just that there's no game in there it's pretty well centered right so I can put it back together game in try with the game in so obviously we've got the proper Nintendo logo now and there we go. Right so I've put my screen cover on and I've done a bit of testing and in terms of the display 
it's fantastic. The positioning, everything about it is great. Uh, two issues. One is the speaker. Uh, it's really vibrating when it hits the higher notes on the Tetris theme. Um, it really, really kind of vibrates. So I'm going to put some hot glue on the back of that, see if that sorts it. And also the contrast dial replacement that's supposed to change the palette and the brightness. You can press the button, it changes to the different palettes, uh, but you try and roll it up and down, it just jams, it just gets stuck. So I'm gonna have to try and cut a little bit more of the plastic off there. Although I removed the bit it suggested, it's pushing right against that back bit there. So I'm gonna have to remove a little bit more to try and give it some clearance to turn that up and down. So that's what I'm gonna do next. So firstly our speaker, I think it's just the fact that it's moving around in there that's causing the sound vibration type issues. So a tiny bit of hot glue in there will hopefully sort it out. Now I'm keeping that pressed down because I don't want any of the glue to actually slip through the gaps. So I've done a bit around this side hold it in place while it sets now I'll turn it around and do the same at the top see when that's actually in there now it's really really easy for me to scroll it up and down it's only when the unit was together that it was stopping that happening so I think it's just a case of removing some of the plastic from here I'll use my uh, plastic remover tool just scrape it across there a few times I'm noticing that where it matches up here, there's a couple of little bits of wire popping through from the other side, just like there and there. I think if I clip those back, just those two, it might help a little bit as well. That might make it a bit better. Right, only one way to find out. Let's put it back together. It'll move up. Um, not down still too tight these points here I flatten them off a bit with the Dremel see if that works well that that's great now that's really good okay if you're doing this mod this is nothing to do with the kit the kit's great um, but if you're doing this mod and you'll find that that contrast dial when you're moving it up and down is sticking and you've checked the plastic and you've removed it all and that's all okay if you can see some bumps here then it's where those wires are soldered in now make sure you don't undo the solder join but you can remove a little bit of the metal from the top there which just gives you a bit of clearance for that dial so hopefully this will be the last time I have to put it together. Let's try that now. Yeah, that moves absolutely fine. So it was the little bit on the PCB that just needed trimming down. Otherwise, that's great now. Um, pushes in and comes out no problem and scrolls up and down no problem. We'll give it a check. So it comes on. We've got a blue or the green or the red or the yellowy green or the purple we'll stick with the white for now and we'll hear what that sounds like yeah that sounds fine that's nice and clear now so that's all good right so we're done that was easy even though I tend to make these things look difficult right all done and um, it's a really really awesome game boy that I've ended up with there a few things about the kit first of all it cost um, 59 pounds plus five pound postage so that's like 64 pounds for that kit from retro6.co.uk for that you get the kit that you've seen in the video, which is pretty much the same as the one that I got a fair bit cheaper from China a while ago. But what you're paying for here is the speakers already pre-soldered. It comes with the bracket. It was a little bit awkward to get it centered last time. So the bracket did make that easier. So yeah, I mean, it's a more expensive option, but it is easier. The speaker vibrating, I would just suggest to put a clue on. So yeah, in conclusion, it's quite expensive, but you do end up with an amazing Game Boy out of a Game Boy that doesn't work. I would definitely say if you've got a Game Boy that works fine, go with putting a backlight in it 
or find a broken Game Boy to, to do this with because it replaces the whole front half. Uh, and it seems daft to you know destroy something just to put a new part in when there's broken things out there already. Track down a broken bit and use that. Um, but in terms of the job itself, if you're new to modding, that really is easy. You don't even need to use a Dremel to remove those other parts. You can just cut them out um, with a knife or with snips. So in terms of putting it in, it really is as close to a sort of straight drop in and, and put it all back together as you're going to get. I would watch out for this dial, obviously that's working fine now, I can turn the brightness down, I can turn the brightness up. It's worth taking the time to make sure everything is right rather than settle with, oh well that's a bit stiff or that doesn't quite work. It's worth getting it right if you've spent that sort of money on it and you're going to spend time playing on it, get it right, do it properly. Um, this kit was really really easy to use, it did make it so that I could get everything lined up without having to keep stopping and checking. For me, I think I was fine either way with the original kit that I got or with this one, but this did definitely make it easier. So if you're new to modding, this would be a great place to start. Anyone else tried this kit? What did you think? Let me know. I'll see you next time.